it's crazy, but I promised you, so I'll do a little bit now, and later I'm gonna continue because I'm not gonna do the whole clip all over. All right, and once uh, I wait, then we can start the lesson. So, boom! Nice. <laughs> okay, so uh, I'm gonna show you today the first uh, five different way of tying the belt. Okay, the belt in Japanese is called obi, and uh, there are different ways how to tie it, and uh, in different styles they use different ways. Uh, the way I tie it right now, this is the most traditional and simple way. I will show you right now, and then after I'll go through the others, and later I'm gonna show you how I'm using uh, the different uniform and how I tie the belt in Kung Fu and etc. All right, so we start with the belt. The first thing you have to know is that, uh, okay, I have these stripes here, so I'm gonna tie them, it'll be easier. Usually when you practice, uh, you don't have to tie it, but if you want, you can use it uh, and tie it. This actually come from uh, Shaolin, uh, Shaolin, from Chinese Grove, and, but I will show, I'll talk about it later. Okay, so the belt, first thing is that you take the belt and you make sure that those two tips are together. So you make it in half. Now the belt, if you can see the belt, one side is full and the other side is actually the, the stitches inside. So it's like double here. And the Japanese, they make the black belt. So they make the white inside and a, a black cloth or silk outside. So by the time the belt get ruined and then it looks like you are, and then it's, you can see that the sensei, the, the, the teacher or the master is a long time practicing, the, the wider it gets. This is actually my uh, third black belt that I started from scratch. I had another two that already become white and I burned them and I start all over again. So I'm practicing since I'm seven. So yeah, a few black belts already passed my, under my, my, my belt as we say. Okay, so we start, uh, we make it in half. And we make sure that the, you put the thumb on your belly button. Then you put four fingers and you will put the belt under the pinky. Now you make sure that the, the full part will be on top, all right? And you will make it uh, around your waist, okay? And when you get to the back, you will just twist and you go all the way in and you come in. So now you take the left side, you bring it on top of the right side then you will put it inside under the two, the two belts all together close to your body and you make a little tighten. Now the top, the top part will go above the down part. Okay, and you will put it, there's a hole, you put it inside a hole and lift it up and then you tighten it and you get that, the normal uh, tie. This is also called a flat nut, all right? So, and you make sure they are together so this is the first basic. Now, if you look at the back, you will see here that they are crossed on each other. They cross here. They're not nicely one on the other. So this is the regular one. The second one, okay, the second type, we use it also for swordsmanship and also for uh, other styles like judo, jiu-jitsu, they like to do it. We actually want to make sure that the, the back will be only one line. So what we're going to do, we're going to take a little piece. Usually we take it until the center, until your spine. Okay, we put it on the hip, on the left side of the hip, and we start to roll the belt from the, the side. Now we will keep this one down, okay? And this one goes on top of it. So we go all the way, okay? I will continue, make sure it's nice and, nice and clean. Move on and come here. When I'm coming here, I will put the top part under the two belt that already been around my waist. I will take that part, bring it to the center, make it, Accurate and tighten it and make sure like that a little bit. You can always make them together like that and bring it a little bit. Okay, and I will make a little adjustment and tighten it. Same idea. Now here you can see that actually the belt is flat. So there's only one line all over. Okay, so this is the second one. And always remember that the top part goes above the uh, the bottom part and go inside. You see, I go inside here, inside, okay? I go inside, okay? And then I pull and I tuck it. Now, if I do it the wrong way, the other way around, you will see that the belt is awkward, you see? This is the other way around. That means 
that the belt is tied wrongly. Okay, now we'll go to the third one. The third one, uh, we'll do the first part the same. We can do either way. We can do, or we go around, or we go the regular way. So I'll show the regular way, which is easier. And uh, from there, we're gonna go for the second, to, for the third uh, one, that usually many people do it in Judo and Jiu Jitsu because they want the belt not to get free while they're fighting, okay? Because of the, the, the pulling and the pushing, and the the, the, the the gi always get out, and then you have to uh, tie the belt and the belt release and all that. So there's a better, there's a stronger way to tie it, which I'll show now, to make sure that the belt is not uh, opening through during the fight. So we start again the same way. And I go on top, okay, and I tighten it. Now, I take this top part and I put it under the first lapel, here. See, I put it here in here, and I make sure there's a little space. Then I'll take the other one, and I bring it in and inside. Okay, now I will tighten it. So this part is under, all right? Make it nice, and you can see that one belt is normal, okay? And the other one is actually under the first line. So what happened, that it will be very hard, will be very hard uh, to release the belt. And that way, that way the belt stays stronger. And now you can do the same way by moving it around and still tight it again. So I'll do it quickly. Some call it Hollywood, there's all kind of names, but uh, doesn't really matter. This is called Obi Musum. Belt knot. All right, so now we I get to the same position actually. Now, if you look at the back, you will see that everything is actually nice and clean, okay? And over here, I will do the same. I will go, I will take this part, make it a little bit longer, and I will take this one and put it under, under the first lapel, the first part of the bobby, and then up over here, I bring it in, and I will tighten them, and get the same, you see, you get the same, uh, the same uh, knot, and over here, it's actually secured. So when they pull the belt, it's not releasing. And also the belt won't open so quickly. Of course, when the belt is uh, uh, new, it's more stiff, it's easier to get open. The longer, the longer you practice, the belt becomes more soft, more saggy a little bit, that it's tightened harder and it's harder to open it. All right, now the, the, fourth, the fourth way I'm gonna show you is gonna be actually a special ninjutsu uh, two types of ninjutsu uh, tying. So the first one is just the same. You can do the first or the second one the same way, but the ending will be a little bit different. So this is like, it's not really a different tie, but it's a little bit uh, different than the next. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna take these two, these two parts, you're gonna put them under. You put this one under here, under this side, under the two part of the belt. And this one on the other side, the same way. Okay, and it's gonna be like that. Sometimes we use the same uh, type when we tie it above a hakama. Uh, the, the samurai long pants that look like a skirt. Okay, so you can see here, the lapels are out here and sometimes uh, we can do that kind of tie. Usually in ninja they do it. And you can see Hatsumi Sensei, he usually do it. And uh, yeah, so that's another way. Another one I'm gonna show you is a very unique one that when you use a regular gi without a hakama and all that, you can use that kind of tie when you wanna use for holding a sword, okay? So I'll just tie it here quickly, easier. Okay, so I'm gonna take the belt again, make it in half, all right? And I'll put it on my belly button, here on top. Then I will go down, make a big X on the back. And I will come down backwards. Wait, I lift my pants a little bit. <laughs> okay, and I will come down. Okay, I'll do it again. And I will come down to my waist. You see, so this belt is a little bit up, higher. If you have a big belly, it's better. <laughs> Holding your belly. Okay, and over here we'll make the regular knot. I'll do it more quick. Okay, so just 
make sure it's, it's accurate. Okay, and over here I can actually tuck those two under the first one, if I want. Not have to, but I can. Okay, so I will tuck them in just like before, but you can see that the, the belt is actually over here is higher. Now, so now, if I take a sword, I'll just open the, the knot. By the way, swords also have many different way of uh, how to tie the sagio. Sagio is actually the, the silk rope that uh, we attach to the sword that actually secure the, the saya, the, the scabbard, not to release from your hakama when you put the sword. So now the sword, you can put it on top from the top all the way to the bottom and it will hold the sword uh, nicely so you can practice with the sword when you don't have a hakama. When you have a hakama you use it differently but when you don't have a hakama you can use it. Then you can tie it on top here if you want or you can also tie it on the bottom part. I usually prefer to tie it on the bottom part, it would be more comfortable and uh, yeah this is a different tie, we'll talk about it when I teach you swordsmanship, I don't talk, I teach you now, so I'll just show you the way. Now from here, I can actually uh, do the, the draw and all the techniques that I need. And the sword is nicely uh, tucked into the belt. Okay, so uh, now after we've done uh, those five uh, types of uh, belt tying, I wanna show you how to use uh, another uh, basic uh, hold for a sword or any kind of weapon like a stick, but usually for the sword, because it's held on the left side, and how we can use the belt to hold the sword. So let me show you, and uh, you can use it also. Okay, so uh, I'm going to get to, I'm gonna get it out, and I'm gonna tie the belt again, just like before. Now this one is better to do the second one. Okay, because I want to, to make sure that the belt around me is straight. I don't want the X on the back. Okay, so you, I take the belt, I put it at my spine, okay, at the spine, at the center, that I know that's how much I need to leave. Then I'll attach it to my left side. Okay, now I will start to roll it around my waist. Remember that this part, the short part will go under. So the long belt is coming above. All right, then I continue. Okay, and I'll bring it in, and I bring that to the center, make it nicely in the center. Then I will make the tie. Now when I finish, I can leave it just like that, holding. Now over here you can see that the belt is nicely lined, and there's no attachment. Now if I take the sword, okay, I take the sword, I tuck it on the first one, okay, I tuck it on the first one, and then I'm taking the bottom one and I lift it on top. So what happened is that if you see now, you can see here that the, the, the sword, the, the sword is nicely tucked within the belt and the belt is like an X holding, right? So it's holding it nice. And then I can actually uh, tie the sageo on the side of my belt. I will use it, by the way, if I, if I tie it here, I will tie it only on the first one, on the outside part of the belt. I won't tie it on both, I will only tie it on the outside, is enough, and then I will uh, be able to practice. So I will usually use it in uh, ninjutsu or uh, kobujutsu or any kind of uh, old, old Japanese martial arts when I don't use a hakama. By the way, I can also use a hakama and put the belt on top. Some styles, they put the regular belt the Koryobi, the, the black belt, on top of their hakama, and then they can put the sword. But usually when you have a hakama, you will put a special belt, which I'll show you later, the, a white belt, which is a very long belt, much longer than this one, and also wider, and you can actually uh, wrap around your body three times. So you can put the, uh, the, the long sword, and when you have a short sword, you can actually put the short sword also, when you have a hakama, I will show you later, and then this, uh, the short sword will be actually coming from the inside and will be tucked together. And then you can also tie 
uh, this part. Uh, I'll tie it right now on the little string that attached the, the gi, but actually you can tie it this end. So then the short, the long sword will be forward and the short sword will be sideways, you see? It's different. So from here I can uh, draw the, the small one from inside and the long one will be drawn forward. All right, so uh, that will be the main difference. When we practice EI, uh, EI Jitsu, Yaido, we use the Hakama, and I'm gonna show you later how I do it. So that's about it, and I hope you enjoy it, and we'll go to the next one, and I'll show you some other units. All right, guys, so stay tuned for the next one.